Next, uh, Dr. Bhatma Chandrasekhar and Endowment Oration. Uh, Dr. Bhatma Chandrasekhar is a past uh, Vice President. She is uh, born on uh, 21st 4, 1945 at Kumbhavan, Tamil Nadu. She did her schooling at Corporation School, Nungamakum, Chennai. Graduated MBBS at Tanjavar Medical College. Postgraduate uh, DGO at Kasturiba Gandhi Hospital, Triplicate. And MD uh, Obstetrics at Institute of uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Egmore. She took her membership and later fellowship of National Academy of Medical Science, New Delhi. Later she took membership and fellowship of Royal College of Obstetrician and Gynecology, England, MR, uh, MRCOG and FRCOG. She worked in Salmania General Hospital, Berlin for four years and later King Hospital, London for six years. She obtained diploma in, uh, diploma in uh, gynecology ultrasound and uh, laparoscopic surgery and infertility from France and Germany. So, uh, she, uh, she served as assistant and associate professor in obstetric and gynecology in the Sri Ramachandra Medical University for over a decade. Later, she upgraded and developed the uh, Trust Hospital, Devaraj Manikchan Maternity Hospital at Chaukat Pet Chennai. Academic contribution and uh, uh, training for MBBS, DGO, MD, and National Board PhD students. She has supervised a logbook of uh, MRC OG candidate from South Indian region for over a decade. She is a member of IMA Kodambakam, past president uh, of our brand, vice president of Tamil Nadu IMA co organization secretary at 2004. National IMA conference at Chennai participated in APA. Epicon in 1995 and 2002, later at the FOGSI in 2010. After that, on 3rd February 2016, she has survived by her husband, Dr. S. Chandra our treasurer, and two children who are software and hardware engineers. With this, I invite Dr. Sandeep to introduce the speaker. Good evening everyone. Today's uh, orator does not need any introduction at all. Dr. T.S. Chandrasekharan sir, kindly come on to the seat sir. I request our president Dr. Ellerson to present the garden. I, I request uh, Dr. Muthun Perumar sir to honor with a shawl. Padmashri Award by the Government of India in January 2016. Uh, awarded the Masters of World Gastroenterology Association, the highest award of gastroenterology in 2019. And Tamil Nadu Scientist Award by the Tamil Nadu State Council. And he was conferred fellowship for the Royal College of Physicians, Ireland, London, Edinburgh and Glasgow. And he has been invited as a TEDx speaker in Bits Ranchi. And he is the Honorary National President of Indian Society of Gastroenterology and awarded the Olympus J. Mistra, J. Mitra Endoscopy and Cisco Pentax Aration Award in the, gastro, in the field of gastroenterology. And he was the best outgoing student with 14 gold medals and he has been alumni of Madhuri Medical College. He has, been, uh, he has delivered 36 prestigious orations and more than 500 invitational lecturers in, in, all over India and abroad. He has served as an expert and faculty in over 80 international live endoscopy workshops held all over the globe. And he has trained over 750 doctors in GI endoscopy from all over India and abroad. He has performed more than over 23,000 uh, complicated therapeutic endoscopy procedures. 
all over the globe, not only in Chennai. And he has established the development of medical gastroenterology in Coimbatore Medical College. He has founded the Med India Charitable Trust and he has organized over 100 free medical camps, inclusive of 50, uh, 60 camps exclusively for visually and hearing impaired and physically challenged school students, which is a great thing. And uh, he owns the Medidia Hospitals near Valwar Port of here in Chennai. I request... Sir, you stand over, stand over. <laughs> so we can have a standing ovation for him. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of IMB Kodamakam, I sincerely thank you for your presentation. Kindly come and please deliver the language. I would have addressed uh, more than uh, 50 IMA meetings. This is the second time I am coming to the bottom of my IMA. I can uh, tell you that the most active, the first five will be bottom of my IMA branch. The close completers will be Yerud and uh, Tirupu. The Western world, probably I was in Coimbatore for some time. I think that is because of the dedication shown by Dr. Muthupurma and so many other doctors from Chandrasekhar and my friends are all here. So I must congratulate for the efforts and the dedication on Sunday evening. You are missing your family and coming here. That's a great service to humanity. The reason is, most difficult is to be a family physician and relatively easier is to be a specialist like me because I have to know everything about something. Now doctor, uh, my previous speaker was telling about SOMO about, about the cardiac failure and other things. So the family physician has to know something about everything. It's a very difficult thing. So IME is the best platform to know anything other than your field. The reason might be why you want to know something other than. I'm an ENT doctor, I'm a, a gynecologist. Patient does not come and tell you the diagnosis. I tell you a small example. The patient was to be wheeled into an operation theatre. He was my close friend. I just happened to cross it. I asked him what happened. No, sir, they are uh, taking me to the surgery because I have acute abdomen. Okay, I think they have decided you go ahead. No, no, can you just see this? So I was going through that. He had acute abdomen. They have done the barium. So there was submucosal edema in the thing, and there is a nice uh, narrowing of the small intestine. Anybody will think of intestinal obstruction. So I went through the records. He was taking anticoagulants. And he had not undergone INR for few weeks. So he had bleed into the submucosal area. That has produced the swelling and mimicking like an intestinal obstruction. So had he been taken for surgery, with a prolonged IDNR, he would have been, you complete it. Then I realized that whatever may be the speciality or whatever may be you, you are once you are assigned to a doctor, you have to know something about everything. That's a great service to the, our patients. So I salute IME for doing religiously such meetings and it's a great organization. In fact, one of the world most populated, the best organization is IMB. <laughs> Dr. Sandeep, thank you for your kind words. And I bring warm greetings to Dr. Dalil Larson and Dr. Venkra Chalam, another office bearers of Kodambakam IMB, the one of the most prestigious IMB. I don't know how many uh, minutes I have to talk about this. No limitations, sir. Yes. The orations, no limitations. 
So I bring warm greetings from the India Institution, which I initiated in 1996. I see my colleague Dr. Professor is here and Dr. Jagadish who was a gastroenterologist. And I had a few more gastroenterologist members of this uh, prestigious club. Dr. Patma and Chandrasekhar, they practice in the same street where I am, Old Airport of High Road. I had a couple of occasions to interact with Dr. Padma. It's a great loss to the family and to the medical fraternity. So the oration I'm delivering in his name is a kind of prestige for me. Nineteen fifty, just then soon after the independence. The lifespan of Indians was 37 years. The lifespan of Indians in 2014 is 67. How did it happen? Because of advances in medicine, modern medicine. So uh, we have to, uh, we can take pride in telling this. In 1950, there was no scan, endoscopy, imaging, no pathogenesis. Nobody knew about H. pylori, nobody about inflammatory bowel disease and what we know about shoulder dislocation. We did not know about what is bacterial translocation and we did not have any immunological basis and the only drug we used to use is antenatal duplex and allotropsin. No high profile antibiotics, no monoclonal antibiotics. Life was very easy because gastroenterology was not a speciality existing. The good old cardiology and neurology only people came to know. And many of us have taken the gastroenterology, I mean neurology and cardiology. 1970 when I joined, 73 I joined medicine. Anything upper abdomen, we should think of peptic ulcer. Okay, the moment you open peptic ulcer, you take the medicine. Anything lower abdomen will think of amoebiasis. And any jaundice will think of infective hepatitis. Only barium in x-ray. And if you don't know anything, you will say the word laparotomy and proceed. That's a very famous, I think some of the seniors would know this. If you tell now, patients will proceed to another doctor. Another terminology we used to use is laparotomy, explorative laparotomy. We will explore, nothing, nil, if you write now nil surgical, after opening the abdomen, then you will have nil practice. After. Can you do now like that? Now patients are asking what I am suffering from, what is the level of stage, what is my uh, to success, to your success rate, how many patients you have treated like this. I am quietly lost. Is there anyone better than you in the city? <laughs> so uh, you have to tell them, yes, Professor Aravind is very good in this. So I, this is the era. If somebody I tell poem, I'll tell you what is poem. I have done 50 cases. I have done 50 cases. Okay, how big your team is? And let me tell if I have a complication, who will treat? I think uh, Srinath is here. Uh, so he would know the importance of having a team. So no effective drugs and this is what 1973 and 2019, what a change this slide will tell you that endoscopy, manometry and explore, I mean, uh, the imaging, spyglass, volumium laser, so many things are happening. What is this? Why do we need it? And your question is asking, sir, you have come here to showcase. No. Then what? Is it useful in day-to-day -day practice? Yes. I will be convinced only if you show that how it is useful in day-to-day -day practice. This is what I am going to do in this variation. What are the game changers in this? The summer slide will tell you that and endoscopic ultrasound and radio frequency ablation and so on. And the coagulation, APC and cryotherapy and so on. Sir, I thought you were a physician, you were telling so much about surgical. 
Yes, medical G is between surgery and the physician. So we do lot of minimal invasive work. That's why there is this field as like now cardiologists do the aortic wall through the femoral puncture. And has become what is that called? Tavi. The the Tavi I put wrong. So this is called Tavi. So I used to remember that the cardiologists have become. How much cardiology, invasive cardiology would have reduced the work of cardiothoracic surgeon? Lot. Lot. He is very politely telling a lot. Must be 50%? More than that. In fact, none of the doctors in UK want to become a thoracic cardiac surgeon. See, but that's also a great loss when we need it, when we do not have a good people. I know that in those days nobody will take neurosurgery. Because first you will do the head tonsuring of the patient. After the surgery, you do the head tonsuring of the patient's son. <laughs> so that was the trend in neurosurgery in Madre Medical College, such a uh, my famous department was to be. Now the advances happened so much. And now we talk about the hand movements, we have only, you calculate there are only 27 moments you can do that. But uh, the, uh, this one, the robotic can do 52 moments. So now the era of robotic care, this one. This one diagram, very interesting slide. You will be wondering what is this slide. Gastroenterology is self a speciality. Now the subspecialization happened. In our uh, hospital we have six gastroenterologists. One is luminal. He will, not that he will not say other things, he will be focusing on luminal. Somebody on liver, somebody on therapeutic endoscopy, somebody on endo ultrasonography, somebody on third space. Sir, I think you are, uh, what is space endoscopy? Are you going to the space and doing? No. I'll tell you what is it. So, every field has advanced so much. I think my friend, he will tell you that he is closely attending all my lectures. And uh, the space endoscopy is also now. What is the space endoscopy? So I will give a bird's eye view of this thing. I want the audio here. I remember this movie. I don't know how many of you know this. Is audio there? Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. There are two friends. Now it has become a friendly atmosphere. You have to work in unison. You have to work in uh, as a team. Okay, can you just put it there? Okay, doesn't matter now. Is the audio coming? Okay. So here, what they do is, they uh, work in uh, a kind of, as a team. If one is tired or one is, they will take over. I will tell you this. Is if they, at least video alone, okay. I will compensate. So this is a very famous song where both the friends are uh, they see a complication now. They are discussing panel discussion who has to manage and they are not having come into the uniform decision. They look at the complication, it disappears. Claudia means would have been better. So now they know that. So this man says, I am very tired. You take the job of writing the scope. So this is what now you must work in a team. This is the another thing I learned. Uh, single man cardiologist, single man pneumatologist, single man pulmonologist practicing will be very difficult. In future, it will be like that. So we were seeing this uh, problem like this. Now it has become like this with advances in technology, okay? Now everywhere the game changes. See, the, even the World Cup final, the overthrow by the New Zealanders, four runs, they lost it. So that was a total game change. I think those who follow cricket very closely will know that. So what are the game changes in gastroenterology? The game changes may be invention, 
or intervention. It adds accuracy in diagnosis, precision in management, minimal intervention, and maximum benefit, and there is a shift in the paradigm shift in the management. Is there any game changes? Every field would have some game changes. Now I have to summarize. My, how many of you were in the era before Ranitidin? Please raise your hands. Before Smitidin Ranitidin. Please raise your hands. That means your age is more than 65. All of you. This is one way of identifying your age also. <laughs> and everyone enthusiastically looked at it. That means you are more than 65. However young you are looking. We are young by spirit. Huh? We are young by spirit without the evil spirit. Yeah, this is the vanity. <laughs> There's so much. In Madhuri Medical College, I remember, there are 10 cases of Trunkal Vedotomy and GJ. Per day, 10 cases. Now, in one year, we don't even get 5 cases. Hats off to the discovery. If anybody tells who discovered submitted in, IMA Kodambakum branch will give you a gift. <laughs> who is that? He got a Nobel Prize. He is contribution to both gastroenterology and cardiology. He discovered propranol also. Black. Who is he? He got another prize. Very black. Dr. Black. Dr. James Black. I think you should give a big hand. <laughs> Dr. James Black. The one with humility he accepted the honor. Dr. Somasundaram. No? So he got the, he is a, which country is from? England. England. I think he deserves that he has read it. And, uh, so it is not come as a fluke. So he got Nobel Prize because discovering propranol and uh, symmetry in which we are using now. What a discovery. HPLRI and uh, two Australians got Nobel Prize for this. They are the game changers. And that's everybody will be expecting who is the thing I will not ask. <laughs> See, you have to change your game every time. Otherwise, people start reading me. So, the most part of the game here is you have to involve everybody. If anyone is sleeping, I will point out the questions. So, and advances in radiological imaging. Who would have thought MRI? My God. MRI, pelvis, uh, perianal fistula, you see that. Whole thing will tell you about heart, so all these things kind of fistula. Fistula means you refer it to your enemy. That is a dictum in gastroenterology. <laughs> sir, I am uh, res there you become respected, sir, I am referring to. So he is also elated for somebody referring. Oh my God. And the moment you touch the patient, ten, ten, ten times you get recurrence. Because we did not know the internal anatomy. Now you are pelvis. My God, what a discovery. Salute. And pseudo-anidism, you see that, it's a game changer, CT scan, ultrasound, all these things. We are very, very fortunate, very privileged, very honored, and we are very fortunate to live in this era to see this. Before seeing the CT scan, MRI, ultrasound, I feel sorry for them. At the same time, I feel sorry for those don't utilize properly also these facilities. And manometry, 24 hours ambulatory PA, third space endoscopy, bariatric endoscopy, and endo ultrasonography, and so on. So they are the game changers. And other game changers, capsule endoscopy. What is this capsule? Sir, we know about tablets and capsules. What is capsule endoscopy? Hepatitis B, C, liver transplantation, lifestyle related disorders, and preventive gastroenterology, all this thing. This one organism, everyone thought Hari Vari Kari, is for the answer. Now, if you tell them Hari Vari Kari means they will tell you you are uh, I mean, 70 years before born and you have not read after that. Some people, the last time they have read this, the final year exam. After that, they have not touched it. Most of our nurses are like that. So I make a point to give them one hour in our library. They should sit and at least touch the book to them. 
Because uh, medical, we progress very well, but in parallel, our paramedics are not. And this is the, I will underline, this is a difficult read. After the advent of H. pylori, the incidence of ulcer surgery in duodenum and gastric has come down drastically more than 70%. Don't you see it's a game changer? And we are living in this era. How many of us enjoying this? Maybe certain, maybe little unhappy Srina. Oh my God, I used to do so much of agatomy. If only one atomy is less. No atom now. Because atom is not there. But we have some other thing to look forward. I'll tell you what is it. Now your question is, sir, uh, you are okay. Can you tell very specifically? Have you improved the diagnostic capability? And don't tell me all this uh, diffusely, all the advances that you are aware of. Um, but tell me some example. Okay. This 51 years old lady comes with dyspepsia. They do endoscopy. This is a white light endoscopy. Just see that this is called a white light endoscopy. And my colleague from Kumbhakonam says, Sir, she has got the family history of cancer. I am referring to you. White light endoscopy seems to be okay only. But if you carefully see, there is some. Sir, you are making this story. That can you just confirm it? Okay. How will you do that? You need to know much more in detail. So this is called a narrow bad imaging. What is narrow band imaging? You know light has got red, blue, green. Blue is superficial. To filter the green and red, blue light alone goes. Superficial mucosa are seen very clearly. That's the same example I was giving some. Now, suppose I see entire hall. I do not know specifically. But I see my previous speaker. He is uh, sitting cross leg he is wearing a tie, and he doesn't have a pocket, so I can't tell you how much he's got cash here. And he's wearing belt. All these things I am able to see very clearly. This is what narrow band imaging does. You understand? But I ignored, I ignored, Muktu, I ignored, start taking notes, all this. I am concentrating here. No, this is the principle. Okay? And I found there is something there in this. What is the ITEC biopsy? 51 years maybe, other is healthy. So everyone will be scared, sir, I want to undergo endoscopy. So this is enough carcinoma. Very early stage. And we did the uh, endoscopy mucosal resection and follow for three years. No recurrence, nothing. Don't you think diagnosis we have achieved? The game changer? What is the use for us, sir? You are happy because you are diagnosed. The use, the utility for you is, when you refer case of endoscopy, sir, please do NPA imaging for our patient. This is the what I want. Don't just be happy sending the, getting the report. NPA, please do it. Then the gastrointestinal also will be very happy. This man knows, sir. How did he come to know about NPA? And, uh, no business to interview. It's not NBA. This is narrow band imaging. Sir, you are told one example. I am not very convinced. Tell me some more example. That's, this is the what it is. This is the endoscope. And you see something different here? That is ultrasound. A Japanese, two Japanese were there. One person was doing endoscopy, one person was doing ultrasound. One of the mental leave. So this man has to go to one room to endoscope, another room and so on. He said, it was so tiring, I should do something. So he imagined, he put the miniature ultrasound into the tip of the endoscope. So he can go. Suppose I want to do transabdominal, fatty abdomen. Sometimes you, want, you know, can't see the liver sometimes. So fat. Only the fat alone. And the women also will be so difficult to see something. So you want to show integer and bone C, that is called endo ultrasonography. This is for diagnosis, this is for biopsy and therapeutic. 
simplify because you have to know so many things. You have to know about antiarrhythmia, you have to know about antibiotic, you have to know about emergency medicine. So you should not load. The best way to learn is to learn what is very essential and apply to your practice. So this is the needle coming out of that. So this man came with the mass in this CT. This is the one. Normally what do you do next? CT guided by FCR, ultrasound or MRI. What will happen if you do that? From this track to the anterior abdominal wall, the needle tracks dissemination of malignancy. So you have treated the early malignancy, but there is a recurrence of tumor in the skin. It happened. One of my doctors late five, uh, five years before, sir, so pathetic now, he has got a skin secondaries. So I asked him, what did you do? We did CT scan. So the lesson, moral of the story is, please do not go for CT guided biopsy. You are so much against the radiologist. No. I am telling this is, you do the endo ultrasound guided biopsy like this. See? Now I am taking from the posterior wall of the stomach, I am taking biopsy. Now we get the re uh, report, adenocarcinoma, and he was operated, and this is adenocarcinoma. Now they said, uh, okay, diagnosis is very convincing. We did a follow-up and metastasis and all this thing. And he had a pain, we did a celiac plexus, durolysis, that's a different story. Okay, sir, can you tell us something about intervention? What is the game changer now? In 1979, when the house was done, you get a GA bleed. Next day morning, Dr. R.S. used to come. The patient surveys, we take the credit. Old doctor, sir, patient is doing well or not. We spontaneously stop. The patient dies, sir, disease was so bad, bleeding heavily and bleeding. Nobody is there to ask us. Blood for blood, nothing else we could do. That. No endoscope available. The heroic surgeon would open and see, he said, full of cirrhosis, I can't do anything. Heroic, uh, the cardiothoracic surgeon would do devascularization. He's so happy till the patient dies next time, next day. Have you achieved anything? Let's see. We have now developed the, the science has developed a clip like this. What are the clips? Uh, I will not go into the technical detail. I will just show you this curve. This is a bleeder here. It has gone and surgery. But through the endoscope, we will pass a clip like this. And you suck the tissue along with the, you literally strangulate the blood vessel, like what I am showing here. Bleeding is stopped. It is done through endoscopy, endoscopy and what a game changer this is. I am enjoying my field because I am able to offer. It's very passionate about my field because it has grown along with me. When I was a gastroenterologist, I have never seen like this. But when I am practicing, I am seeing. So you ask me, sir, diffuse bleeding, you can't do clipping, you know, what will you do? There is a powder available. What is this powder? This powder was used in Vietnam, not the face powder. There is a gun powder called that. Not the gun powder of Andhra. This is the, the coagulation powder. So you spray it, the bleeding stops. What a wonderful thing here. And you have a torrential bleeding. We do endoscopy and put a stent like this. You compress the blood vessels. Is all, sir, is all available here or America or anywhere or in the experiment? No, no, everything available. In Chennai, we do regularly these things. And this is the uh, stenting. This patient came for ERCP. This is the ampulla posa. This is the ampulla vetter.
So after the stone removal, this is the duodenum, second part of the duodenum, ample of beta. Stone was there, I'm very happy I'm done. But what happened is torrential bleeding started coming. So the therapeutic unit should have all the hormone material. This bleeding is a nightmare, rarely happens. And what do I do? Send it to surgeon. By the time patient may collapse and die. Send it to international radiologist. By the time you organize, this bleeding will be filling up the entire duodenum and small intestine. What will you do this? This is like a small false coming up. So we do the, uh, the stenting like this now. This is a bleeding coming up like this. So we did the balloon tamponade will not stop. Then we did the stenting. So now what we did is, we place a self-expanding. Now cardiologists are very popular because they will stent it. The moment you realize that they have done the angio and they say 75 block, 90 percent block and 25 percent block here and there and right uh, this artery, left artery. By the time you recall the thing, they have already done the angio and they put a stent, so the patient is alright. So this is what they are stenting here. We have taken the same concept from the self expanding. If you ask me any one game changer, self expanding metallic stem. It opens like an umbrella at the place where you want. If you have a esophageal varices like that, we do the banding. This is the band attached to the tip of the endoscope. Go to the esophagus, the lower end, you apply the band, it almost you can do it like a bloodless. I think um, my colleagues will agree that this is the band. We have copied from the surgeon. The surgeon used to do banding of the rectal various, I mean the hemorrhoids. Yeah, I think we are taken from the idea from surgeons and urologists. And this one investigation, I learnt it in Germany, glue. Glue, you put it in the water, nothing will happen. The same glue, you put it in the blood the monomer becomes polymer. You see this now? Coagulus. So can you demonstrate how effective it is? This is also used for the liver surgeon when the surface bleeding is there. So this is the patient bleeding heavy enough. If you miss one minute, he is dead. Now I identify and prick it and put the glue and you will not believe it to see that absolutely this becomes like a solid rock this is a power of game changer in endotherapy power this is one thing has revolutionized Dr. Paul Swain had a flight got delayed in uh, somewhere in Norway so you happen to see a movie called, I think some of you would know that movie called The Fantastic Voyage. Anybody has seen? So uh, the movie where the miniature human, they will create it and put it in a capsule, they go on fight and they will, I mean the story goes on very interesting. He saw the movie. Last of us will see the movie and go to bed. Next day we have to go work. But this man was in the music. He said uh, he would not travel to London, he will go to Israel. Israel is a very good in defense missile, uh, this one. So he contacted uh, Dr. Ida. He developed this capsule endoscopy, which has got a miniature video camera. It has got a miniature video camera, radio frequency signal, and it can uh, you get transmitted. <coughs> and you can receive the signal in the, and this is how it is, the capsule endoscopy. Now this patient has undergone uh, 20 times endoscopy, 10 times colonoscopy, nothing has happened, but in the small intestine, if you see that, this is a small intestine in no man's area, no man's area. Previously we used to open and see small intestine, nowadays we don't have to open. You see this bleeding, you got it now? So this patient has angiomalformation of the small intestine, which we coagulated using this. Don't you think this is the game changer? Capsule and 
no one would have thought of capsule endoscopy. This is what the power. So I appeal to all the youngsters or even the people here, their grandchildren or the children doing medicine, to ask them to apply your free time or the, to invent something like this. Then for every capsule sold, Paul Swain and Inter get the loyalty. 10%, 20%. So every capsule, not the regular capsule, I mean the capsule endoscopy. So your regular capsule means you will become the multi -million. So uh, this is about the, I just want to tell you that if a patient is not upset with all this, we don't know whether it is stone or malignancy. Uh, to summarize very clearly, we have a spy glass. We can go up to ampulla better than the regular, but the spike goes up to the bile duct and pancreas duct. If it is a the growth, we will take biopsy. If it is a stone, we can fragment the stones. We can fragment it like that. See? The power of, uh, the, this is called a spike. You can spike the areas where cannot be accessed. This goes into the pancreas duct. So you are telling all these things as a fancy story. Are you doing it? Yes, we are doing it. Spyglass is there. Now, how will you do this? So this is the spyglass, how it looks like. We use a laser and this is how we do this. This is the mother scope, baby scope, all this laser fiber and optic fiber, all this thing. Very, I will not go into the, uh, the details of it. What we did in this case, and this is the ampoule of beta, we entered into the bile duct system. We did the, I mean, the sphincterotomy. After that, only you can enter the spike glass. The blue one is the spike. You see, this is the area. So this patient referred as a stone, but he's got a cancer. So this is the power of game changer. We can diagnose it. Then in the advanced cancer, we just stented and came out. The other patient, and we stented. Another patient is a huge stone. Where we did the sphincterotomy. This is the ampoule of beta, sphincterotomy done. You enter down here, here, and there is a stone here. And you see that how we do the laser, you see they're getting fragmented now. Now, in the last one, uh, 10 days, we have done five cases of effort from all over the, the South India. And because of the laser fragmentation, otherwise, you need to have an open surgery or laparoscopy. So, this is the fragmenting stone. So again, power of game changer. This patient came from Malaysia. Advanced disease. Surgeon said, sir, I cannot operate because he's so married but malnourished. What is his problem? Let's see. You've got a huge growth blocking the duodenum. You can't see the ampulla, you can't do ERCP. And he's got a duodenum, so he's vomiting and jaundice. Malnourished. My surgeon says, I cannot. You have anything? Yes. So this is the MRCP picture. Now what we did is we connected the bile duct to the duodenum, called and endo ultrasound guidance bile duct and duodenum called colidopo duodenostomy. And the first step from the stomach to the jejunum, endoscopically we have done the gastro jejunostomy. My God, this is mind boggling, sir. Just tell us how can you do GJ with the endoscope? This is the in thing in gastroenterology. That keeps me very inspired, keeps me engaged, keeps me uh, young also. How will you do that? I just saw that we have done it. I just saw that the endoscope is full of growth. That means I can't see the ampulla, I cannot do ERC. Okay. Now we have used ERCP and the endo ultrasonogram. This interface. And this is interface. I will not go into the detail. I just come to the point. Okay. This is the bile duct. How will you know that? This is how the training. It takes five to seven years training. And put a needle. Confirm the bile is there and pull it like that and the one end of the stent in the bile duct, other end in the duodenum. Oh my god, very thrilling. You see the stent has come out now? 
and this is the cold upper duodenal stomata. Now we brought the bile from bile duct to the duodenum. That duodenum is obstructed. So how do you do that? You have to do GJ. And we demonstrated in the ASA conference. It was the first case of GJ in this part of the country. So we did it. What is GJ? Gastrojuvenostomy. We have need have a special equipment. So okay, we place the uh, the guide wire and the tube will go up to the jejunum and we will tell you that. And through this, this is the jejunum identified through the stomach. Now put a needle and put a stent. Jejunum identified, pull it like that, and the one part of the stent in the jejunum, other part in the stomach. So this is gastro jejunostomy. So, so patient was relieved of vomiting, patient was relieved of jaundice, he lived for almost five months. This is a GJ stent. So the again the power of game changes. Now there is no end to uh, keep telling this. I need to wind up somewhere. Otherwise you will have a game change, you start moving. But sir, can you just tell us before you wind up what you are done with this lifestyle? Okay. What is lifestyle? Obesity. Obesity in this uh, Diwali time, Ari but if you buy one obesity, you get everything free. I think you have to inculcate it to the patient now. Sincerely, please raise your hands. How many of you walk for half an hour a day? Kodambato IMA is very healthy. But those who raise the hand, I think 50% we don't do so. Even if you are lean also, there is enough evidence there improving the muscle mass and this one. Particularly for women, the reason is the women they think they doing household work is not. Household work will not come into the exercise. Then no woman will be obese. You need to have a cardiac exercise, stretching of all joints and everything should be there. The cardiologist would know better than me. And most of the cardiologists see that they eat little bit of water, that is their main food. And they breathe the air, that is their side dish. So much they are very conscious about it. So there is no side dish and main food. Is the water and air. Now, 5 million years to become a right, 50 years enough to become like this. Nowadays you go to the movie, there is like a, a festival they come. I see the bigger size, the, the popcorn and all this, the whole family is coming and enjoying. And their BMA, average BMA must be 58. Yesterday I went to a movie and I saw that so many people are there. Right from the title scene to the end, he was taking food. <laughs> so, this is how it is happening now, lifestyle. Almost the population of Indians are obese now. Population of India is obese in the world. That means one fifth of the population of the world is obese. And we feed them so much. And this is called obesity, it's become global city. So, this is a nice model to look at, but I will keep it for only briefly. This is how the models look like. But if you don't control obesity, in future our models will be like this. And these models also cannot walk, because they will be very tired. They don't do the ramp walking. They have to be brought in a the car like that, just show piece. That means the models, they are like this, how will be the audience? Imagine. And uh, this is the people building balanced diet like this. He's balanced the puri in such a way, okay, he's managing it. And this fellow of eating is balancing the two way. This is his concept of balanced diet. I can tell you emphatically, however great willpower you have, like um, some of the actors, they have great willpower. But there is everything they can encash sports people, then athletes, models, and the TV personalities, all this thing. They have a motivation, everything in cash. If they reduce one kilo, his uh, salary will be raised. But we don't have any motivation. If the doctor loses one 
one kilo, will the patient pay more? No. Then everyone will be going to that. So, uh, so if the doctor is very lean, his consultation we can make it 300 instead of 200. If there is a motivation, every doctor will be running. They will not be running behind patient. Running before patient. So this is the diet alone will not help you. Somebody is okay. Okay. Is all right now? No, it should come here. That is more important. <laughs> so anyhow, I am just going to tell you very important video. See maximum in the Facebook. How people become lean in a fraction of a second? Can anybody become? So he is trying to show that. See, he sees a young lady, he becomes very lean, then the real thing comes out, he loses the drinks also. So tucking in alone will not help you. All these things will have a very, very temporary effect. So this video was most watched, inspiring, motivating all obese people. So if you want to impress, you should really lose weight, not that you just take deep breath inside. Okay, having said about this, it's a complicated surgery, it's the gold standard, there's no doubt, I respect surgery. But uh, how many of you think obesity surgery really is safe? Please raise your hands. How many of you think uh, obesity surgeries need little more refinement or little more complication free. How many are? So obesity surgery is good concept everything, but again we need to have that because obesity management is a different ball game. It is not like a prescription. Obesity surgery is a different ball game. You need to have an infrastructure and other things so much. Can you tell us that my daughter is very obese, she is for the marriage. Can you reduce the weight? And another question comes, sir, uh, severe diabetic, can you reduce 10 kilos, he will be happy, insulin doses will come down. Another fellow comes, sir, uh, he is waiting for liver transplant. Uh, oh, so obese surgery, surgeon is refusing, can you reduce 10 kilos? So if you want to reduce 10 kilos, what is the answer? Change the balance, huh? No. What is that? Anybody? You will get the price from IMA Kodamak. Reduce? Oh, this was done in a balanced diet, I showed you. Huh? All this thing beyond 5 kilos, you cannot do that. Bayonetic surgery is a complication. You have in anything? Yes, two things are there. One is the balloon. It is not the regular balloon, you put it inside. This is the Intracastic balloon. I remember two patients came, they introduced themselves, bride and bridegroom. So I put the balloon, six months later I went for the reception. Both of them lost around 12 and another 15 kilos. They were looking very decent. I am motivated by them, their parents, very obese, bride's face and bridegroom. They also underwent the balloon. Six of them in their family. So I used to call them balloon family. So this is the balloon, but temporary effect, but if you motivate it, they'll do very well. And this is one thing this a balloon looks like. How it looks like. What does it do? It reduces the appetite. If you're taking a 15 Italy's, it'll come down to 5 Italy's, 7 Italy's, something like that. How many take? None of us, because the market will be split. Even if they are taking, they will not raise higher now. <laughs> so this is the obesity management. So if you have anything more than that, yes. Now we are introducing, this is called intra, this is the gastroplasty, endoscopy. We reduce the stomach size. You make a marking, you do a suturing. So we will be soon introducing this intragastric balloon. See, this is how the stomach is reduced. That is uh, what the surgeons do, endos I mean the open or laparoscopically. We are doing endoscopically. So I have covered a fairly diagnosis and GA bleed and the jaundice and the lifestyle. 
and you can go on like that but uh, I want to wind up here. Manometry is very useful. This patient had uh, achalasia cardia and this is the third space. This is the first space within the lumen, outside is the second, in between the four layers. Between the mucosa and the submucosa you go and make a tunnel and cut the muscle here. Who would have thought of? A student from All India Institute now migrated in US, fungus pasteurizer. He demonstrated in the animal model and this man, Japanese, you know, he did it in human. And this is just to show here how we do this. I think this is not moving. So this is the, uh, we are making a puncture here, mucosa, we go beneath the mucosa, but superficial to the muscle, and what I imagine is, this is creating a new space, this is called a third space. People think of space rocket thing, another thing going, here there is a lot of space available here, potential space, then you go there and clear it. But all this looks very glamorous. Oh my god, I should have become a gastroenterologist. I would like to do that all this. It takes almost 20 years to know that. Now you can calculate my age also. 20 years it takes and you have to work for 10 years under a mentor. Then only this is possible. So this is third space endoscopy, ladies and gentlemen. I will just show the muscle cutting. How do you close it? If you close the mucosa or the tip, Perfectly all right. It is done through the mouth, and next day the patient is upright, up and healthy. And this is the power of game changer. What is the indication for this? Achalasia cardia, leomyoma, submucosal tumor, and all these things. Early carcinomas. All these things are indication. So we have covered. So today's gastroenterologist is will be like this only. A Swiss army knife. He's not a single. He's like a he's uh, having everything in his hand, see like this. And he has to manage so many things. And this is what the today's gastroenterologist is. He has to know about hepatology, luminal gastroenterology, third space endoscopy, endoalthrosomography, therapeutic endoscopy, above all he should be a good human being to talk to the, your, the patients and interact, all these things. And uh, said all these things are all right. Can you just summarize in one slide? What is the message for non gastroenterologists? All this is okay. And we appreciate that you people are doing uh, the sciences advancing. So last uh, this, you keep it on your tabletop. Anyone coming with these symptoms, you should pay attention immediately investigate. No delay in this. Dysphagia, bleeding per rectum, unexplained weight loss, anorexia, family history of jaundice and family history of hepatitis, family history of cancer and hereditary family. All these people should be investigated immediately. Chronic diarrhea, altered diarrhea and constipation, constipation, the recent change in the bowel and all these things. So these are long symptoms. This is one thing. I created a new concept called, so all this thing all right, I am very happy. If we start referring all the GI to specialists, how do we survive? What is the role of family physician? And where we need to uh, put a, draw a line. I can manage, I can refer it. So I created a concept called one, two, three, four, five concept. Okay, what is this? Number one, there are certain diseases like acute diarrhea, acute hepatitis can manage independently. No need to bother about. I am competent. I listened to lectures like this gastro for the recently. I listened to him also in Kodambakum IMA. I can, I am confident. There are certain diseases where NAFLD or early cirrhosis. You get one consultation from a specialist, then you follow it. Third thing is you manage, but periodically send it to a specialist. So do this vaccination, do this HB DNA, and do this hepatitis C, and this patient needs GA bleed, needs a surveillance uh, endoscopy once in a year. He will give you guidelines. 
Number four, the great service to the patient. The moment you see this, immediately refer to the specialist. What is that alarm symptom? GA period, obstructive joint days, all these things. Immediately refer. The patient is very grateful. Once I treated a patient, all the thing went on well. Uh, he was thankful to me, but he was profusely thanking the referring doctor. So he referred to me in the right time and I heard his hands so he detected all that. He kept on uh, the, um, praising the referring doctor. So this is the concept. This concept holds good all speciality. Cardiology, neurology, pulmonology, nephrology, everywhere. So wherever I go, I tell this concept. The fifth one, it has not come here. I take help from internists, I take help from others, surgeons and other people. That is also very important. So this is what with this, I think, now nah, this has come. Systemic diseases with the GA manifest, I take the dermatologist's opinion, as quick as all this thing. So uh, now, the most important role, if you have not listened to any of my slides, okay. But this slide, don't miss it. Please make sure you have been vaccinated. You have been vaccinated? Yes. How many of you checked antibody against B virus? Please raise your hands. If you have more than 100, you don't have to bother. If you have less than 100 tighter, you go and tomorrow it's all part of Miami. Dr. Ariel and the Rentazum will organize blood test camping. Be safe. First, make sure that you are not healthy. Hepatitis B vaccination. And tell all your patients hepatitis B vaccination. They eradicate H. pylori. Nutritional intervention very important. Vitamin D deficiency, vitamin uh, the uh, B12 and folic acid iron. Most of us are all of us are unless put otherwise, we are deficient in vitamin D and we are deficient in nutritional knowledge. Nutritional knowledge they are very deficient. The moment you think plumpy is all right, but you do vitamin D, nothing is there in the blood. So our plumpiness doesn't mean that they are healthy. They only have fat. And obesity prevention. Wherever you meet, tell your colleagues, friends, sir, that you are putting on weight and uh, you be watchful. I also tell the patient attenders also. They also become my patient after that. So one way of improving your uh, footfall. And the pre malignant condition follow. You have a, I remember a patient, Cricopangel web. I told them this is a pre malignant condition. I refer to the doctor also. Sir, this is a pre million condition. He needs every three months one endoscopy for one year and every three years. The referring doctor also told the patient, So this is what my friend has written. You have to come. But he did not come. Three years later, the patient comes. He's got a square muscle carcinoma, plumbar cancer. Young lady, 27. I felt very sad for that. So where are we missing? Our duty is not to update only. Our duty is not only to make a good living with the income. Our duty is to make the society remain healthy. And this is a very important aspect. This is the reason why I designed my life. Four days clinical practice, one day research and publication, and one day for social service. That's how we did the camp and other thing. And our children need a lot of I concentrate on deaf and dumb, blind and physically challenged children exclusively improve their nutrition. Because one incident, a 16 years old girl was looking like a 9 years old girl with so much of malnutrition. The mother's main concern, she does not know even that she is so puny. She came and whispered in the year that she has not attained menarche. So what is the tragedy? I think I I still recall 10 years before. That's the time I get motivated to do the nutritional parameter. For that only I got the state award. Nutritional intervention of growing children. So your doctor has got so much of pride and opportunity to help the society. 
and uh, genetic counseling, all these things. So this will be the most interesting slide, which is people are very happy once they say this is thank you. So uh, I must thank uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar who said you must give an oration here and I must thank the office bearers of IMA Konambakam for this very, very wonderful, interactive, observing who I did not even see one person even sleeping. Unless some people are very, they got the knack of keeping the eyes open and sleeping. That I can't make. Absolutely, this is a very, uh, I enjoyed that giving this. The most important foreigners when you ask that, are you enjoying? I did not know what you mean by enjoying. And I went as a fellow to King's College and they said, are you enjoying your stay and interaction and working in the hospital? What is the enjoyment? Then only I realized that if you have a passion and enjoyment and whatever you do, work is a pleasure, always work is a burden. And stay healthy, stay connected, stay contributing to the society. This is what my life now I have taken it like that. Stay healthy, stay connected. This is connects you. I am connected to you. You are connected to him. And stay contributing. So this is the philosophy. Thank you very much.